so, 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 so far, we have covered add, subtract, multiply, and divide of functions. Now we're going to move into composition, and composition is a little bit more tricky, so this video is going to be a little bit longer. I'm going to start with composition of relations. I've got a relation here, composition of a relation, where I've got f of x is equal to a set of points and g of x is equal to a set of points. So if I want to find the composition of f of g of x, then the first thing I need to do is figure out g of x. So g of x, I will make myself a quick little table here. Um, so I'm going to have my x, I'll have my g of x. And then I'm going to have my f of g of x. And hopefully this will be the easiest way to show you. So I'm going to start out with my, my x's from my g. So that's going to be a 7, a negative 1, a 4, and an 8. And let's move that down just a bit. There we go. And give myself a little bit more room here. <clears throat> so if I put my 7 in, then g of x would be 0. So I'm going to put a 0 here. If I put my negative 1 in my g, I get a 7 for my g of x. If I put a 4 in for my g of x, for my x, I get a 9. And my 8 would bring out a 2. Hopefully that part has been pretty straightforward. Now we get to the tricky part. So if my g of x is 0, 7, 9, and 2, then I'm going to take those g of x's and I'm going to fill them into my f. So if g of x is 0, g of x is 0, then my f of g of x would be a negative 1. And so my point would start being at a 7 and end with a negative 1. If my g of x is a 7, my g of x is a 7 right here, I put it a 7 in here, I'm going to get a 7 back out. So that means I start with negative 1 and I get a 7. Next one, if I put in a g of x of 9, g of x is 9, then I get out a 4. And so I have the point 4, 4. And my last one, I'm going to have a g of x of 2. So I'm going to put a 2 in right there for my f of x, and I get a 6 back out. And so my last point is going to be 8, 6. So I take my x's and I put them into my g of x, get those answers out, and then put those answers into my f of x to get my final answer. And then I take my original x, my original x, with my final f of g of x, and I put those together to make a point. So let's try this on another set. So I've got f of g of x, so I'm going to take and make a g of x, or take all my x's from my g, all my x's from my g, and let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger again. So I've got more room. So I have my x's, I'm going to have my g of x's, and then I'm going to have my f of g of x's, and then I'll have my final points. So my g of x's, my first initial x's are going to be 5, 3, 7, and 9. So I put my 5, my 3, my 7, and my 9 in there. And then with my 5, my 5 is matched up with a 7, my 3 is matched up with a 5, my 7 is matched up with a 9, and my 9 is matched up with an 11. At that point I need to move into my f of x, so I'm going to take my g of x column, this g of x column right here, and I'm going to plug that into the x value for my f of x. So my first value is a 7, so if I put a 7 into my f of x, I get an 8 back. If I put a 5 into my f of x, I get a 3 back. If I put a 9 into my f of x, I get an 8 back. If I put an 11 into my f of x, I get a 4 back. The last part is just to put the points together. So I have my original x's and my final f of g of x's, which make this the point 5, 8, 
this is the point 3, 3. This is the point 7, 8. And this is the point 9, 4. And so that would be what I would get out of a composition of f of g of x. What if I wanted to go the other way and make it g of f of x? Well, let me give myself a little bit more room here, and I can put in. Now I'm going to start with my x again. But my next column would be my f of x. My next column would be my g of f of x. And then I've got my last column, which will be my answers. I need to extend my page a little bit and put in my table. And I'll probably need to go back and forth a little bit, or I could just move these down. And if I move them down here, I can see them a little bit better. So I'm going to be taking, in this case, this is going to be figuring out my g of g of f of x. So my x terms on my f of x now are what fill in my x column. So I've got a 7, a 5, a 9, and 11. 7, a 5, a 9, and 11. And then I put in my, each one of those and figure out what I get back. So my 7 comes out with an 8. My 5 comes out with a 3. My 9 comes out with an 8. And my 11 comes out with a 4. Then I'm going to take those and put them in as the x's for my g. So I look down below, and the 8, there is no 8 in my g's, so that doesn't give me anything. My 3, okay, my 3 gives me a 5. I have another 8, which gives me nothing. And then my last term is a 4, and my 4 gives me nothing. So the only thing I get out of this would be this point right here, my 5 with my 5. And the rest of this function, this g of f of x function, would be undefined. And the only solution, basically, I would get out of that is the point 5, 5. So that is how we do it if we have a relation. Now if we do a composition of functions, so now we're looking at a composition of just the functions. We've, we've done the relation part. So now I want to do f of g of x. So that's going to be taking f and then taking that of g of x. So that means I'm going to take this g of x and I'm going to put it into my f of x. So that's actually, I'm taking f of 3x because g of x is actually 3x. And so whenever I take that and I, my f of x is actually an x plus 2, that means I'm going to take this x spot and I'm going to fill in my 3x and then I'm just going to add my 2. And so my final answer is just 3x plus 2. So f of g of x in this case would be 3x plus 2. Looking at a more complex situation here, we've got some more stuff going on. So again, I'm going to start with my f of g of x. So that's going to be f of g of x. So that's f of, and g of x is 2x minus 1. So that means I'm going to take my 2x plus 1, or minus 1, I'm going to put it into my f anywhere there's an x. So that's going to be 3 times 2x minus 1 squared minus... 2x minus 1 plus 4. So at that point, I need to square the 2x minus 1. And remember, you need to FOIL that, so that's actually a 2x minus 1 again. 2x minus 1 squared means 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. So I'll bring down my 3. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then 2x times minus 1 would be minus 2x. And minus 1 times 2x would be minus 2x. And then minus 1 times minus 1 would be a plus 1. And then I can distribute my negative sign, which would be a negative 2x plus 1, when I distribute this negative sign right here, and then plus 4. And I need a little bit more room again to make sure I've got plenty of room to do this example. <coughs> so then I'm ready to distribute my 3. So my 3 times my 4 gives me my 12x squared. My 3 times my 2 gives me a negative 6x. 
my a three times my two gives me another negative six x, and my three times my three gives me a plus three. And then I'm just going to rewrite the rest of that, and finally combine all my like terms. So I look through and I see only one term that's got an x squared on it, so I've got 12x squared. And then I look and find all my x terms, so I've got minus 6x, minus 6x, minus 2x. So that is going to be minus 6, minus 6 is minus 12, and minus 2 more is minus 14x. And then I've got my last terms, which are all my constants, so I've got a plus 3, plus 1, and plus 4. So 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 4 is 8. And that would be my final answer, would be the expression 12x squared minus 14x plus 8, if I'm going to take the f of g of x. But what if I want to do it the other way around, and I take g of f of x? So g of f of x, that would mean that I'm going to take my g of f of x. So my f of x is that 3x squared minus x plus 4. So that would be the 3x squared. 3x squared minus x plus 4. 3x squared minus x plus 4. All right? No, I have it all right. 3x squared minus x plus 4. And then my g of x says to take 2x minus 1. So I'm going to take 2 times 2x minus 1. And I'm going to fill in my f of x, which is 3x squared minus x plus 4. And this one's a lot shorter to do, so I'm going to distribute my 2, which would make this a 6x squared minus 2x plus 8 minus 1. Distributing that 2 to each one of those terms, right? And then I combine my like terms, and I only have one term with an x squared, so that's 6x squared. I only have one term with an x, so that's minus 2x. And then I've got plus 8 minus 1, which would be plus 7. The last thing to do would be, say, if I wanted to evaluate this thing, if x was negative 2, then I could plug in the negative 2 everywhere there's an x. So that would be 6 times negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 7. So that would be 6 times negative 2 squared would be 4, minus 2 times a negative 2 plus 7. 6 times 4 is 24, negative 2 times negative 2 is a plus 4 and plus 7. So that would be a 28 plus 7, which makes a 35. So that would be doing compositions both with relations and with functions.